There are three parts to the geared wind turbine. The gearbox, which can allow the output speed to be faster or slower than your wind blades are moving. The alternator, which creates the electrical energy. And the wind blades, which turn the drive shaft in your gearbox. Components and free documents for this activity are available at teachergeek.com. The Teacher Geek construction system allows you to build almost any mechanism you can imagine using two simple tools. The dowels and connector strips can be easily cut to size using our Teacher Geek multi cutter. But don't use the multi cutter to cut metal because you'll ruin the blade. Most of our Teacher Geek components come with holes that dowels just press into. Just twist the reamer back and forth to ream out a hole. Reaming out a hole will make it so it no longer holds a dowel. So don't ream out holes you want dowels to stay pressed into. Only ream out holes you want dowels to slide or rotate in. A list of the parts needed can be found in the gearbox build sheet found on teachergeek.com under documents. For this kit you will need one of our Teacher Geek multi cutters. The Teacher Geek reamer, number 2 Phillips head screwdriver, and pliers are optional. Your first step is to cut 4 dowels to 100 millimeters, which is about 4 inches. Place each dowel into the corner hole of your hole plate. You can push or tap it in. The easiest way is to use a pair of easy cutters to just tap it in. Set the second hole plate on top and just tap it onto the dowels. Cut a dowel to 125 millimeters, which is about 5 inches. Cut a second dowel to 152 millimeters, which is about 6 inches. And then go ahead and cut a third dowel to 180 millimeters, which is about 7.5 inches. Place the longest of the three dowels into the 40 tooth gear. Place that dowel into the hole plate. Make sure it's six holes across and three holes down. Slide a washer onto the dowel before you push it through the next hole plate. Slide the washer against the hole plate. Place a stop clip on the dowel next to the washer, but make sure that the dowel can still move freely. Now take the smaller dowel and push it into the 20 tooth gear. Place the dowel into the hole plate. Make sure it's still three holes down and comes in contact with your 40 tooth gear. On the other end of the dowel you just inserted, attach a 50 tooth gear on the end. Attach the 10 tooth gear onto your last remaining dowel. Then go ahead and place that dowel into the hole plate, making sure it's still three holes down from the top and comes in contact with your 50 tooth gear. Attach a stop clip onto the dowel that you just inserted next to the hole plate, but make sure the dowel can still spin freely. You can add an optional brace to the drive shaft if you want. All you have to do is ream out the perpendicular block and then attach it as shown in the picture. You're done with one part of your geared wind turbine. Once you have everything together, come back and try to redesign your gearbox to fit your turbine. Try to increase the efficiency and power output. Improve it and try to make it your own. Next we need to build the alternator. The alternator has two parts to it. The stator, which is held stationary and has the magnetic wire wrapped around it. And the rotor, which holds the magnets and spins with the drive shaft. A list of the parts needed can be found on the alternator build guide, found on teachergeek.com under documents. For this kit you will need a Teacher Geek reamer, a number one Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of our cutters, and some sandpaper. The magnets used in this kit are very strong, so handle with care and keep away from medical devices. See the instructions or label for more information. We recommend that you mark the same pole slash side of each magnet as you take them apart. This will help you when you're putting them into the rotor because you have to alternate each magnet. Here's a little tip so you can help keep the magnets separate until you get them into the rotor. If you keep them on the same side, they won't attract. It's only when you flip them over that they start to combine together. Make sure that you alternate the magnets so that each magnet has the opposite polarity of the one before it. All you have to do is just grab a magnet and snap it in.
Now that the rotor's done, it's time to build the stator. We recommend that with a sharpie, you draw the direction in which you're going to wrap the wire around, since it needs to alternate each time. Go ahead and screw one of the small screws into any hole, it doesn't matter which one. Take the insulation off the end of your magnetic wire. Go ahead and take the part of the wire that you removed the insulation from and wrap it around the screw. Then take your wire and start wrapping it around the first tooth of the stator in the direction that you marked. Since we're using 30 mag wire, you're going to want to wrap it 50 times around each tooth. Once you've wrapped one tooth, go ahead and go on to the second one, but make sure you change directions. Now that you've completed all the wraps on every tooth, go ahead and take that piece of wire and clean off the insulation on the end with a piece of sandpaper. Then also go ahead and screw in another screw next to the one you placed in earlier. You're then going to take the wire that you just got the insulation off of and wrap it around your second screw. Just take your reamer and clean out the center hole. Just take the one inch screws and screw them into two holes that are opposite each other. A list of the parts needed can be found on the Blade and Hub build sheet found on teachergeek.com under documents. You also need to find some materials for your blades. You could use paper, cardboard, plastic, or whatever else you could find laying around. For this kit you would need one of our Teacher Geek multi cutters, a number 2 Phillips head screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. Your first step will be attaching the hub together, but make sure that these sides are the ones that are touching. Place the three screws into the screw holes on your hub. You can start them by twisting them with your hand. Then go ahead and use a screwdriver to screw them all the way in. Then go ahead and add some number 10 nuts on the back, but don't tighten everything down, you still have to insert the blades into the hub. Once you have your material, you can go ahead and cut out your blade, but I recommend drawing your blade on the material first. You can place up to 6 blades into your hub, so you can go ahead and determine how many blades you want your turbine to have. Now you have to attach a dowel onto the back of your blades. If you're going to tape your dowel onto your blade, duct tape works the best. Another option is to add perpendicular blocks onto the back of your blade for holding your dowel in place. Now that you have all your blades cut out and your dowels attached, it's time to insert them into the hub. Just insert the dowels into the holes on the side of the hub. If they're a little hard to go in, go ahead and unscrew the screws a little bit to allow more room for the dowel. Your blades are done and they're ready to go on your turbine. Now go ahead and create your own blades. Test them out. Try changing the length of the blades, or even try changing their shape. The hub will take up to six blades, so go ahead and use more, or even try using fewer blades. Using the Teacher Geek Protractor, you can go ahead and change the angle of the blades. Your goal is to maximize the power output of your turbine, so see what you can do. Take your stator and place it onto the dowel. Then place a number 10 washer onto the dowel. Then take your rotor and place it onto the dowel. Keep the rotor slightly away from the stator so that it spins freely.
and then take your wind blades and place them onto the other side of the gearbox. And then go ahead and place it onto our Teacher Geek wind stand.